is the feed on Quest TV with me, Muftar Nabila Abdullah. Today, we're talking about government's decision to withdraw the concession agreement they had with PDS. According to Energy Minister, Mr. Peter Amewu, PDS presented a forged document to secure the agreement they had with government. Earlier, we were made to understand that government was planning to hand over the public sector office, that's the electricity company of Ghana, to a private institution. However, the mirage finally became a reality when the agreement was struck on March 1 earlier this year and PDS took over power distribution to consumers in the country. And yesterday, the information minister, Kojo Opon Nkrumah, announced that um, government has suspended that agreement. PDS also came out with a letter. It was signed by its CEO saying that they did nothing wrong. Um, according to the information minister, Kojo Pom Kruma, the decision was taken after government detected fundamental and material breaches of PDS's obligation in the provision of payment securities, that is demand guarantees for the transaction which have been discovered upon further due diligence. Um, that was what was put out there by the Information Minister Kojo Opon Nkrumah. The Energy Minister, he went further to say that the PDS had told them that there was a company or an institution in Qatar that was supposed to act as the guarantor for PDS. And upon further due diligence by the government, they realized that such an institution in Qatar had no knowledge of what PDS presented to government. In studio with me to do the discussion is uh, Rafik Safian, who is a research and statistics uh, member with COPEC Ghana, and uh, we we'll also go on the phone to speak to Elikem Kotoko, who is Youth for Accountable Governance, and also we we'll also speak to Duncan Amwa on phone, who is also an executive secretary of COPEC. Now to the trending news today. Kolebu Teaching Hospital has been on the trends today at number 16 after a social media user took to the various social platforms to accuse the hospital and its practitioners of a supposed negligence that caused the life of a three-year-old who had swallowed a 20 peswa coin and is said to have needed surgery. Lyad Derek tweeted, What civil country allows emergency cases that require instant surgery to hang and pend? All because of the fact that you do not have popular parents or the financial muzzle to control the system to act. The most common item that children swallow which gets stuck is a coin, duh. He went on to say, we shall not limit this systematic problem to English rhetoric and refurbished solutions which does not see the light of the day. O'Connor, you spoke about needless death just this Sunday. Who are the doctors and healthcare workers accountable to? Later, he tweeted again saying, I am learning she was kept on the drip from afternoon yesterday while her parents ran around looking for money for the surgery. After they got the cash, they were told to wait for the doctor at 10 a.m. today. Little girl could not wait that long. May her soul rest in peace. Kolebu Teaching Hospital later tweeted on their handle with a press release debunking claims that a case of such sort ever happened as purported, saying, No child died in Kolebu from swallowing a coin. Kobe Blay, Gladys Anson. Lia Derek afterwards tweeted this as update on the issue, saying, so I have engaged the doctor on duty and he convinced me that the lady was not brought to him but there is a likelihood they ended up at the wrong ward. Family says they are mourning and want to get the pain behind them first. Hashtag more questions. Hashtag RIP Abba. This update from Lai Derek got replies from people like Dr. Albert Agbi which reads, We also want the name of the doctor you spoke to. This general answer, dear. It won't cut it, cry. 
I saw one of your replies yesterday about being ready for legal actions. We would like your details so we expedite the process. If Kolebu won't take you on, we the doctors will. Jemima Ofosu also tweeted, In my heart of hearts, say, if that story is found to be truly false, Kolebu shouldn't let them get off the hook easily. So that when you decide to speak up about something like this, you have your facts ready. So we know the court, dear, we are going. The case is said to be pending investigations. Stay tuned for more. Today and now let's come back to studio and speak to Rafik Safian, who is with COPEC Ghana. And uh, Rafik, uh, first of all, how would a government fail to do due diligence and sign a partnership with PDS and finally come out to tell us they are suspending it because it's a fraud. Well, first of all, let me let me extend some greetings to your viewers and then to your very self. Um, the whole idea of um, government's position on this matter is is very worrying. You know, if even you know normal companies, let, let's not even talk of government, just normal companies when they are going into you know, business agreements, um, there's what we call due diligence. I think this issue has made it very popular yes. now. <laughs> a lot of people are talking about yes. due diligence. It's it become but, a very popular but, phrase. Exactly. But there's a need for that entity that is entering into a business agreement to do due diligence by doing a thorough background check on the entity that you are going into an agreement with. Yes. Um, Government cannot act like a street person who would just think that once, you know, you have cars and you have logos and you have um, some um, 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 some logistics yes. to display, that means that you are a company that is in good standing. I think that government ought to, you know, go an extra mile to do proper background check to ascertain the authenticity of the company that it is going into an agreement with. Um, from our checks, government did that, but it is clearly obvious that it was not properly done. Um, we have had stakeholder engagements with the authorities involved, and just like you said, you know, but then I would want to um, raise a point. Indeed, what government accuse um, or accuses PDF or I mean PDS of is the fact that they forged an insurance certificate. Certificate. Now, what happened was and that also some signatories. That's what they claim. Yes, I mean so that is that is so. What happened was that you see, for such companies to be insured, it involves huge claims, and so should there be a disaster, would the insurance company be able to pay the claims. And so most of the time, even the airlines, yes. their insurance companies are you know, international. So when this issue happened, we understand that 5% of the insurance was guaranteed exactly. by Danwell Insurance yes. Company. And then the remaining 95% was guaranteed by um, a company in Qatar. in Qatar. I think the name of the company has been withheld. They've, they've, not so, been, they've not been willing to mention that name. Uh, uh, exactly. So, so what 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 happened was that from government own you know owns uh, um, um, investigations, as they say, that they did further due diligence, then they realized these anomalies. No, but, we but, understand. But, okay, just finish that point. Yeah, so I, let me I want to find out why governments would wait to sign an agreement and go and do further due diligence. So, 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 so from that, okay, I'll, I'll just end up. Yeah. So um, what happened was that so they, they contacted you know the consulate in um, in, Qatar in Qatar to do you know some further checks on this insurance company. company. Indeed, what instigated you know their you know contacting of the consulate in, in Qatar was the fact that the real you know manager of that insurance company that was purported to have guaranteed for PDS, uh, PDS actually wrote to the um, um, energy ministry indicating that this is what they have heard and this is what you know they have seen so but they are not but they yes. are not but they as that particular company you know distance itself from that agreement and agreement. they have not you know um, issued any guarantor or any insurance certificate 
to um, PDS, you know, PDS or any other institution and, and, and all of that. to come into a partnership with the government of Ghana. Now, let's go on the phone now and speak to Elikem. Elikem, good evening for joining us here on The Feed. It's always a pleasure to have you on The Feed here on Quest TV. Pleasure is equally mine, my brother. Good evening and how is everybody? Um, we are doing well. Uh, you just heard Rafiq mentioned that even before government got to know that they were dealing with a company allegedly that presented to them fake documents and forged signatories, it had to take the management of that company in Qatar to write to the government of Ghana, specifically to the energy ministry. How could, or what, yes, could, um, what do you make of some of the reasons that were given by the government of Ghana to suspend this concession agreement they had? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we should be asking us too many questions, so many questions. In the first place, uh, is it also not possible that government itself is trying to find a way to cover up itself by being complicit in this whole thing, that maybe they have realized that Ghanaians will discover this whole scam, and for which reason they must rather come out first to pretend not to know and in order for it to look like they are doing due diligence? Because we expect that as a government, they are supposed to have done due diligence and all these things before awarding the contract or whatever to PDS. Whatever agreement you don't had. You don't display such gross incompetence and then begin to come, turn around again to come and tell us all what you are telling us. I had, I had the, uh, the, the energy minister who's in that it will cost us about $190 million yes. to abrogate the contract and all that. And he's still at post running his mouth. Just before you continue, uh, why would someone who presented forged documents to you Receiving still them. have some money to receive from you when you can actually arrange the person before court for presenting fake documents? That is why I am telling you that we should be asking ourselves the critical question. If government or individuals within government are themselves not involved in this camp, because by now, within 12 hours, not 24 hours, within 12 hours of this news, we have to be rolling. We should be hearing names. For instance, you and I have been told that the company involved in the, in, the, in, the, in the whichever country, the name is being withheld for whatever reason. Is that reason more important than the national interest for which we don't need to know further details? And the whole government machinery is still running its mouth, just giving us excuses, and we do not know who is responsible? Is this the competence Ghanaians were promised? Let me put on. Uh, I am Elikem, a youth. Uh, I, I, would, I, would, I would prefer that we, we stick to some of the reasons that were provided by the government instead of questioning the incompetence. Now the mistake has happened. And, and the key thing that I think we should be looking at is how the taxpayer would be forging out or pulling out of his pocket $190 million to pay an yes. institution government is telling us forged documents to secure it. You see, if government is telling us this, is it not the same government we expect to do the due diligence? And exactly. if they have failed, if they have failed, should we now come and rather hold the citizenry in terms of you and I on the street who are paying tax responsible? The very people we elected to take care of the economy are the ones to be held squarely responsible. But they are shirking the responsibility by trying to find a way to get an escape route. And that must not be tolerated. No, but because isn't this isn't this smashing X on their own faces instead of trying to shirk responsibility? It is, it is. But you see, we live in a country where we continue to take excuses, and in the next three days or four days, we'll sweep this also under the, the, the carpet, and we will let go and begin to talk about something else. Um, uh, 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 Rafiq, you you just heard Elikem yeah, yeah. talk interestingly about. <laughs> incompetence here. Yeah. Uh, probably going back to JJ 60 where incompetence became so became popular a word. I mean, so, um, Elikem is not entirely far from the truth in the sense that what we have taxed government to do Today. as a responsibility, they ought to discharge it to the, I mean, to the fullest. You have to do, I mean, it, it, it's baffling that government would come back and tell us that, you know, during the due diligence process, they were not able to authenticate a forged certificate. Shouldn't we be looking it's, out for it's, people it's, who it's, spearheaded this it's, negotiation? I mean, so, so, that is why, so that is why we have the management of PDA, I mean PDS. Elikem, just a moment. I'll be so, coming to you shortly. So, so I, okay. I, well, so let me put it on record that this afternoon, 
we at COPEC have issued um, um, a statement calling on government to do the needful. If they are continuously blaming PDS of having, you know, perpetrated some, you know, um, some, fraud. um, some fraudulent activities in the whole agreement, then government should, you know, come out and prosecute those who have been involved in this whole, you know, purported scam. And so that is what we expect government to do. Um, it, it's surprising that PDS, you know, issued a statement and... Saying that they did nothing wrong. Well, so they said they acted in good faith. Yes. But then we were expecting that they are very aware of the allegations that has been peddled against them by government and government communicators. Yes. So we're expecting that PDS would respond directly to these allegations. They, they, but they, they said they are availing they, they, themselves to all investigations so, so, necessary. But, 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 but yes. well, see, of course, that is what they should do. Yeah. But we see, expect something to come out of it. If this was a fraud up. that was not, you know, instigated by government itself, as, you know, LA So we're expecting a denial from PDS? Well, so if, you see, the thing is, if you have been accused, of course, you need to, you know, grant interviews and then... I don't know if anybody from PDS has spoken to this or beyond the statement. They haven't, you know, really um, um, done anything. They said they were, they were making no further comments until... Uh, exactly. So done. we were expecting that, you know, to, to have, you know, the, 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 the varying views with regards to this issue, we're expecting that PDS would come out and explain to the good people of this country that, look, we were rendering services to you by distribution, but then this is the issue that, you know, has come up. These are the allegations that have been put against us. And with these allegations, we know absolutely nothing about it. We understand, I mean, uh, uh, the government is talking about the companies in, uh, in Qatar, Qatar and, all. and So all they that. need to come out and disclaim. So why are they if, even keeping they not... the name of the company in Qatar to themselves? Well, so that is baffling. I'm not speaking for government, so <laughs> it, 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 it's going to be very difficult for me to, um, to, to, to state why. Yes, yes. But it, it's disturbing for us in a civil society organization. Yes. We believe that, look, Government owes the people a responsibility. There is no excuse. Look, we have entrusted the resources of this country into the hands of government. Do what you want with it. Manage it prudently and give us results. So if you don't give us results, you don't come and blame your incompetence, sorry to say, on, <laughs> on, 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 on a, a, a private company. company. But if indeed that happened, then government should move in and secure the assets of ECG yes. and is secure in the interest of, of, of Ghanaians and, and make we, sure that... We shouldn't that, lose that, that exactly, $190 million. We don't, we don't million have dollars. to lose not even a penny to this agreement. Like you said, why is it the case that a company that has forged document to be able to you know, um, Secure, transact a business, yes, you. you know, we now have to pay them, you know, judgment debts. No, if you can prove in court, <laughs> if you can prove in court, court that, that indeed, you know, they did not discharge their obligation to the agreement as they should, then there's no need, you know, to pay we them. We must any, even let any, them pay for damages uh, uh, exactly, of that, if that partnership. Is possible. Yeah, we'll go for possible? a break. When we come back, we'll still be talking more here. Elikem will still be on the phone and...
Keeping company with us here on the feed on Quester TV with me, Muftar Nabila Abla. In the studio is uh, Raf uh, Rafik Safian, who is with Copec Ghana, and on the phone is Elikem Okotoko. Just before we went for the break, um, Safian uh, was making something interesting, but let me go to Elikem. Elikem, if you can hear me, you heard uh, uh, Rafik mention that government ought to ensure that the taxpayer guess whatever is relevant for them not for you for us to mandate you to take care of our resources and you rather run us down and get us having a banana skin that is thank you that is why i'm asking that we should be asking if government is not pretending not to have knowledge about this whole scam because if they are shielding the company in qatar the question should be why are they considering the interest of government or interest of very some individuals rather than the interest of the country? And you see, I think we need to be asking pleading questions and propound all the theories we can, simply because this is not the kind of governance Ghanaians voted for. It is becoming one too many, and that each, each day, each week, there's a new scandal, and government has not found the decency of courtesy to own up to any of these scams, but rather trying to apportion blames and find ways to avoid the pinning questions. And this is the way civil movements or uprisings begin in countries. It will get to a point where Ghanaians will not tolerate this any longer, and they may take up to the street against the government, and this can no longer be controlled. Ha, Rafik, um, you, you had mentioned earlier how you held... Um a stakeholders meeting was it at was, was there at any point where you were made to understand that there was a party from ghana that probably went there to do due diligence checks or we sat down in ghana and sent emails across to have the agreement signed well so it was a very brief meeting that we had um i myself was wondering you know the whole um in the scheme of things how the due diligence was done. was done. Apparently, it's, 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 it's a whole long process that was to be discussed in the meeting and all of that. But um, from what I get, this, you know, with regards to the question that you are asking, yeah. there was a team that flew, you know, to Dubai to, you know, I mean, Qatar, yes. to, to do these checks and all of that. But, you see, it, it's baffling. We and they are, came back to we, advise we are, that we, we are, agree. You see, we are speaking on this issue with very limited information. And it's very difficult, you see, for you to be able to put or to relay information out there. It is based on what you have. You have. And we have very limited information to this. And that, that is, that is, that I, is putting government in? into disrepute in the sense that people begin to ask questions. Okay. And so that is why... Elikem makes a legitimate point if he drags government into this. Because we are discussing this issue with very limited information. Government simply released a statement and said, look, um, the, 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 the concessionary yeah, agreement has, has been, been cancelled, has been suspended because PDF, I mean, PDS was they not... Even uh, suspended. So there's a possibility that I we mean, could renegotiate and come back into an agreement. Well, that, that no. I'm not very sure of. No, no because suspense, you, you don't suspend something, you that, put it on hold. That, that, that I'm not very sure of. But then, why, um, why would why would you do with a scam? Please you come said again. someone has uh, given a fake certificate. Why do you have to renegotiate? So the reason why government is then is government is could have gone disclosure. straight forward. Alika, if you can hear me, then government could have gone straight forward to tell us that. They've cancelled it instead of saying that they've suspended it. Ex exactly, that is what we are expecting. You see, it only tells you, it so makes a mockery of us, even in the international community, that our governance system is so porous to the extent that scam bags can always walk into our government and find fake certificates and get contracts and we pay huge sums of money, whilst the poor people are still living under impoverished conditions. The police are fighting for proper and better conditions of service or accommodation. Uh, look, there's a lot of struggle going on in Ghana. People cannot afford three square meals because of the heightened hardships. And then we have a, a few people in government who are destroying the public press to this level. And they have the effrontery to tell us that they are withholding the name of the company. For God's sake, let us be able to call a spade by its name. They are probably in the known of exactly what is happening. It could be a machination they have done themselves. Let us find out who are the owners of the PDS. Okay. Don't forget the circumstances surrounding how PDS also even won this. In you don't forget about uh, uh, the, the other company, Miracle something something. 
You, yeah, you get yeah, it. Morocco so in less than ISIS. six months or less than a year, how much has BDS even been able to raise to raise for us? How much have we gotten from that? And so, so Elikam, uh, due to time factor, uh, uh, let me just ask the final question before you go. Okay. This has happened. If you were government, what would you have done? The first thing would have been to fire the energy the sector minister, which is John Peter Amawu. He must resign himself. That would be the honourable thing for him to do. But let's not forget and that he came in when the agreement had already been done. He only succeeded someone. You and I know that. If Mr. Ajako someone, was fired for allegedly misleading the president. And now, Mr. Peter Amawu comes into office. He so. signs what? a deal we had with PDS. Within five months, it has been suspended. And don't forget that these are people who are put in capacity to be responsible for the administration of those particular departments. So firing is a solution in, for you, right? It's not, it's not the only solution. We want the disclosure of the full detail of the company in Qatar, and we want to know those who are the board members and directors of PDS. Thank because you very much, Elikem. We, we have appreciate that. If we have to them, then we cannot allow them to run us down this way and go scot-free. Elikem, yeah, just before I let you go, let me say, um, <laughs> let us go to I mean, session. So, so, so um, I, I completely agree with um, um, Elikem, except that, you know, um, he is sounding more political <laughs> when he, he has, you know, make references to some of these issues. But I do agree with him. We have very limited information out there, and that is, you know, making it easier for people to wonder. To and speculate. Drag, I mean, to speculate and, 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 and then drag government into all of these these things and so i believe that going forward we need to you know try to find out what happens to i mean uh, um, ecg what happens to them now are they coming back to you know permanently take back their position as the power distribution company in ghana what is going to happen i mean their assets and and all of that yes. in our statement we had called on government to to to, to take relevant steps to steps. make sure that we don't lose anything from this agreement we don't even okay. have to pay any judgment debt for this agreement and 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 uh, i mean i mean for this sham agreement because yes. it, it's almost becoming you know a mirage it, it wasn't even possible in the first place so i think that i think that that's it but i also want to um uh, even though it might be a digression but of course um copec has actually petitioned parliament not to approve the increases made by mr um um you even tried um, to finance... pick it at a finance ministry. Yes, yes. You see, it, it, it's very bad. You see, what happens now is that one CD is added to a gallon of petroleum or fuel that you buy. Yes. Okay, so the ordinary Ghanaian already is worse off. You cannot be increasing. You understand that the Can energy... we do without increment? You see, of course we can't do without it. You see, but, but, let but me, let me we tell don't you determine something. how the market behaves. Do no, we? you see, what happens is that government itself has the responsibility to harness our resources together to do the necessary production that will generate us revenue. As a government, when you resign to taxes as a way of raising revenue, then you are putting huge financial burden on your, on your people. And it becomes very difficult for people to go about their normal duties, given the cost of living. And it's becoming very bad. So we have petitioned you know, Parliament Amen. not to approve this particular increase. But, in they, they, but, they've, but they've, they've approved the 6.3 billion, right? I think, I think they, they, they are. Approved. They, so yes, since yes. it's approved, chances are that so it's, 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 it might it's, also it's, be approved. It's bad and it's very regrettable. I think that maybe when we have time, we can discuss Yeah, we can discuss this on, uh, all of that. as a topic on its own. Uh, Rafik, thanks very much for your time. And Elikem, we appreciate your input here on the feed. Um, this has been the feed with me, Muftao Nabila Abla. We'll be back again tomorrow uh, to talk more on other issues that have been. It's all here. The hottest movies, series, sports, and more. Oh.